Good morning. I'm Len Pagano. I'm president and CEO of the Safe America Foundation, and I want to thank all of you for being here today for what I think we all will sense is a very important uh, new development for the state of Georgia. You know, we all know it takes transportation to get anywhere, whether we're trying to go to work, whether we're trying to have some fun, go to church, or to get to a hospital or medical center. And that's the issue that we're here to talk about today, the importance of transportation and the growing number of Georgians who have no way to get to a physician. Safe America has been working with a number of state leaders on this issue. It is an emerging and important issue and one that we've been encouraged to work on because people here in Georgia, thousands of people, need help getting to doctors or to hospitals. Whether it's getting to the VA hospital or a major hospital such as Grady Hospital or Wellstar's Atlanta Medical Center, there are thousands of people who are finding it hard to get to a physician. And who are the three groups that we're focused on? Veterans, veterans who have PTSD, opiate crisis victims, and young women who've been victims here in Georgia of human trafficking. I want to talk a little bit about how many numbers of people are involved in these three segments. And we'll start with the women who are involved in human trafficking. Annually, the National Human Trafficking Resource Center says that Georgia has roughly 446 calls, with 103 of those being classified as high-risk calls, women that need to be rescued. Over a month's time, the number of young women in Georgia who appear to be human trafficking victims number almost 400 young girls. And the ages, 12 to 14. What's also very deplorable is that Georgia has the highest number of trafficked Hispanic females in the nation. On average, 100 Hispanic girls are exploited every night here in Georgia. When you hear about this, you would say that's enough of a worry. But now, let me tell you about veterans. Georgia has one of the highest number of veterans in the nation, one of the highest totals of homeless veterans. Think of this. Female veterans are growing to be one of the fastest segments of the state's homeless population. And there are 1,500 veterans that have been quantified to be homeless, but frankly, there are many others that we don't know about who are out there in places like the woods. I saw this firsthand back in February when I saw up in Cartersville veterans sleeping in the woods in a tent. And several of them had no shoes, and one of them lost all of his toes because of that. So when you think about veterans who served our country, and now you think about are we serving them, many of them have no way to get to the VA hospital. In fact, the VA hospital has asked Safe America for help to transport veterans to get to the hospital. Now, how about the opiate crisis? Did you know that Georgia is the 11th highest state with opiate victims? The number of overdoses is at an incredible rate. Well, that's understandable when you think about the number of doses that are actually being prescribed. 541 million doses here in Georgia. That's enough for an individual, every man, woman, or child, to have 54 doses of opiates. So there's no question we have a really significant problem with opiate crisis in Georgia. And this also has an impact on getting to and from hospitals because many people are afraid to acknowledge their opiate crisis problem. And if they're with someone else and they're on an overdose, the other person may be afraid that he or she will be arrested by law enforcement. So they tend to be fearful of telling law enforcement or calling 911. These are the three populations that we've been studying for about a year and recognizing that getting them health care is a very significant problem. Transportation is a gap for another reason, and it's financial. If you don't have health insurance, you could end up having to call, uh, pay something in the range of $400 to $1,200 for transportation in an ambulance. So there's no question this is a major problem financially as well as physically and mentally. That is why the Safe America Foundation began to look at what we could do here in Georgia as a national prototype to be able to offer people transportation if they have a need to get to a hospital and not have to worry about paying the usual fare or paying any fare. 
We're looking to grow a national fund we call the World Safe Relief Fund that will provide dollars so that we can keep the cost down to less than $100 per person. And when you talk about this, we have already given it a name, Humans Care. And what I'm really excited about is this program, Humans Care, will show that we all care about humans. And one of the groups that has shown the greatest interest already is an ambulance company that is operating all throughout Metro Atlanta and has a great interest in helping do something that is innovative. It's my pleasure to introduce to you now the Regional Director for AMR here in Georgia, Terrence Romatar. Terrence? Len, I, uh, my name is Terrence Ramatar. I'm the Regional Director for American Medical Response and uh, can't thank Len enough. This is an opportunity for us to give back uh, in ways we, we no don't normally do. We, we have 900 caregivers across the state of Florida, EMTs and paramedics that are treating patients in ambulances every day. And never did we think that we can actually t turn some of these ambulances um, to, to a greater cause. Uh, so we're really excited. We're committed to supporting safer and healthier communi communities throughout the state of Georgia. And joining this collaborative, along with our donation of an ambulance to Safe America Foundation, reflects our commitment. And we look forward to making a difference. We look forward to making a difference to victims of, of sexual traf trafficking. We look forward to making a difference to victims of opioid abuse. And we look forward to making a difference to those veterans that are suffering from PTSD. Uh, we look forward to that and turning these survivors into victors. And uh, we couldn't be more, more thankful uh, to, to join in this partnership. And uh, we look forward to a, to a long-term relationship and really growing this program to, uh, to its full potential. So thank you very much, Len. Thank you. Great work by the Safe America Foundation. And uh, we're really proud to partner with you. You know, this is a major uh, innovation and I think a major coup for the state of Georgia to see AMR make this kind of offer and what goes in deeper is the fact that AMR's other executives here in the Atlanta area are looking to involve their own employees as volunteers it's quite compelling to tell you about that and also to acknowledge different people that are here today I'm going to introduce Dick Smith from the Attorney General's office Robert Quigley from the Cobb County Sheriff's office but I'm also pleased to introduce to you several of the top executives here in Atlanta that deal with health care. The first person who I'm proud to introduce to you is a woman who's been very committed to this and other issues that Safe America has been working on because she is not only a Safe America board member, she's the chairperson of Safe America. She also is the president of Wellstar's Atlanta Medical Center. It's my pleasure to introduce to you now Kim Ryan. Kim? Thank you, Len. What an um, important day for all of us. I'm glad to be here uh, to have the chance to help lead Safe America to do this important work and save lives. Uh, the means of doing this, uh, transporting veterans with, with post-traumatic stress disorder, opioid victims needing medical treatment, and helping rescue young teens from human trafficking is so important. We all know that getting around Atlanta uh, these days is tough, especially for those that have no transportation and have medical issues. So having this donation today from AMR is a very significant step uh, towards helping deal with these important issues that are really beneath the surface, um, but they're very real. Thank you so much for that. We are pleased um, to work with Safe America, uh, Atlanta Medical Center's role and other medical centers um, is to provide that much needed medical treatment. To have Safe America base its program at our facility is something we are very proud of. Safe America has, has used an office in Atlanta Medical Center to help veterans for many years. And now it will also assist those with opioid or human trafficking issues. As chairperson of um, uh, Safe America's Board of Directors, I will seek to involve other medical organizations and help bring this issue and our solution to greater awareness. I want to thank all of you from AMR uh, for your assistance and know that Safe America is committed to you and will work hard to help use this vehicle to save lives. Thank you so much.
when you uh, when you look at some of the people that are here in Atlanta and you think about some of the leadership, one of the things about Safe America is that we're very proud that we serve the entire metro area from Cobb County to Clayton County. And in fact, today, our vice chairman, who is here to speak, is the chairman of the Clayton County Commission. And he's been a very high profile leader, not just in Clayton County, but across the south side and across the state. It's a real pleasure now to introduce to you our Vice Chairman, Jeff Turner. Jeff? All right, good morning. So as Chairman of Clayton County and a former Chief of Police, I can tell you firsthand how serious the problem of opioid abuse as well as human trafficking is, especially here in the Metro Atlanta area. So that's why I am absolutely proud of the fact that I am the Vice Chairman for Safe America Foundation because this organization does not only discuss those emerging issues, but they seek out ways to help, to resolve, to help out the community, to do whatever they have to do to make a difference in the lives of the people in this area. And I'm thankful for that. And one of the ways that we accomplish that is through partnerships, through partners such as AMR. Thank you all for what you are doing. Thank you for what is ahead of us, because this will truly serve as a model that the nation should emulate, simply because we're not only saving lives, but we're making a difference in everybody's life that that individual touches. So again, thank you for being here. Thank you for your support. And just know that Safe America Foundation, if you don't know about it, Google it. Find out about it. Find out ways that you can become involved with us because it's about changing people's lives. Thank you. We're very proud to have a growing number of partnerships and the seats in this room are filled with a number of you that are partners of Safe America. And I'm going to introduce several people to you now who we've been working with. And the next woman who will speak is the executive director of another group here in Atlanta that has a great deal of concern over human trafficking. It's with a great deal of pleasure for me to now introduce you to Jennifer Swain. Jennifer. Good morning. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you to Lynn and to Safe America Foundation, the board of directors, for having you spark as a partner. We've been working together for a couple of months now, and we have been fast at work. Um, we're really proud to be a part of this new human care initiative because YouthSpark was born almost uh, 18 years ago when former juvenile court judge Nina Hickson presided over cases of young girls coming through Fulton County Juvenile Court just a few short years ago in early 2000 and they were charged with prostitution and they were actually locked up and treated as criminals. Georgia's movement has grown so uh, much over so many years, and now Georgia has one of the strongest responses to young people involved in commercial sexual exploitation in the nation, and we're very, very proud of that. Um, we have members of our statewide human trafficking task force here as well, um, where they really try to galvanize and make sure that not only are we working and serving those who are on the grounds rescuing youth, and we really can't thank our law enforcement enough for the work that you guys have done to protect all of our kids and our young people. Um, but one of the things that we have to do, and I'm so appreciative to AMR for what you guys have done, because this is about showing the private sector, the com corporate community, how you can jo join uh, Georgia's fight. There's a seat at the table for everybody. When you hear about these issues and of veterans and, and, and human trafficking victims and those in the opioid crisis, we all get excited and we want to roll up our sleeves and we want to help. But we can't be law enforcement. We can't all be service providers. But AMR today has shown us that there is a way to help step in and provide a medical service that will help ensure that those most vulnerable in our communities get the transportation to get the help that they need. Youth Spark role is going to be very pivotal as we're working to educate those members on how to respond to victims of human trafficking, how to make sure that they're able to help. And I also want to challenge today AMR to go one step further and educate their employees. Ambulances go out all the time and they seek victims and sometimes you just need to see something and say something. Uh, we're really appreciative to be a part of this initiative and we look forward to providing education and helping to spread the word about this unique service and create unique programming. So, we're, we're so grateful for Humans Care, and we're so thankful that you care. We appreciate it. I'm, 
I'm very delighted to have so many of you here today in support. And the next gentleman I want to introduce to you has a major role with the Fulton DeKalb Hospital Authority. Dr. Joshua Murphy is their chief operating officer. And early on, as we talked about this together, he said, you know what, I think this is a novel program. We want to be a part of it. It's a real pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Joshua Murphy from the Fulton DeKalb Hospital Authority. Dr. Murphy. The great Dr. Martin Luther King once made the statement that hatred cannot drive out hatred, only love can do that. Darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. When I met Lynn Pagano, I could look into his eyes and I could see a visionary person, a person who wanted to make a difference. So I did exactly what the representative and what the chairman said, Google him, see what's happening. Safe America, Lynn has been there with that over 24 years. He's been cradling babies and baby seats. Now he's talking transportation. Now he's on the issue of opioids. Now he's on the issue of human trafficking. And yes, where should the Fulton DeKalb Hospital Authority be? As proud owners of a Grady Health System with 1,222 physicians, 859 nurses, 959 beds, and yes, we add another 100 beds to our emergency room just for situations like this. And we want to be partners with such great efforts, innovative, creative, where we should be as a nation of people. Now, I must say to you, when you leave here today to make something like this move, I know you have a friend and you have a partner seated next to you somewhere, whether you're at the grocery store, whether you're at the movies, whether you're at a restaurant, whether you're at church, tell them about this foundation and what they're trying to do. So we simply, Lynn, salute you. And again, I got a chance to meet your wife. We salute you in terms of what you're doing. And a good friend of mine once said, Keep on keeping on. So you keep on keeping on with your work, sir. We're here with you. Yes, sir. You know, uh, as I mentioned, we have a lot of people here today. Not everyone will get to speak, but I'm proud to introduce to you now a legislator who has a real compassion for doing serious good. She's a person who's been working on some of these topics, and we have some real common denominators here. So we're looking forward to working with the representative from Paulding County, Representative uh, Paulette Rakestraw. Paulette. Thank you and good morning. Um, I'm excited to see Safe America taking this on. This is such a huge issue in our state and in our nation and, and to see Georgia leading in this. Um, and I appreciate AMR with the ambulance because two of the things that I have worked on is the Human Trafficking Prevention Act and I have a study committee to work on pre-arrest diversion programs and one of the issues that we need to solve is being able to transport people to treatment and we're working on you know studying things like how can we streamline and break down barriers to treatment help people get into treatment because this is such a chronic need with mental health and addiction and we have to start solving problems with um, all of the issues stemming from human trafficking and then the mental health and addiction pieces so that we can start you know healing the 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 problems that we've had related to these issues because it's driving homelessness it is um, you know it, it's causing a myriad of problems you know just in families and and in communities and so to help prevent um, you know suicides and and school shootings we have to start treating the mentally ill and the people with addiction issues and and the crime that it drives so I'm excited to to partner with Safe America and all the we appreciate all the affiliates and partners that are working with us on this and I look forward to working with y'all and as we do the the study committee on pre-arrest diversion programs to look at how we can transport, how we can break down barriers to treatment, and how we can get enough treatment resources to help these victims of human trafficking and people with mental health and addiction issues to make our society a safer place. And um, I appreciate y'all giving me this opportunity and um, look forward to continuing work on this issue. So thank you. I just want to add, uh, we're lucky, Paulette, to have your leadership here in, this, in the state legislature, and we look forward to working with you throughout the next year. Well, we have some other people, and I do want to acknowledge, I mentioned uh, 
both uh, Nick Smith from the Attorney General and from the Cobb Sheriff's Office, Robert Quigley. And if the two of you don't mind, just stand up here. Come on up here because I think it's important for people to see that this is metro-wide very important, statewide very important, and to just see law enforcement and the Attorney General's Office here to support it. So I'm going to let both of you say a few things extemporaneously. Nick, you want to come up? Good morning. On behalf of Attorney General Chris Carr, I'm on. thank you all for coming out. Um, as you know, human trafficking and both opioid abuse is one of the main issues that we focus on. Last October, we launched our statewide opioid task force, and since then, many things are in great works. And it, you know, again, you've heard it time and time here, it's partnerships and collaboration with the public sector, the private sector, and nonprofits to get things going. And that's exactly what we're seeing come to fruition through this foundation. And we just want to say thank you and to the members of the Georgia General Assembly. Thank you for all the things that you're doing. And law enforcement, we can't thank you enough. Um, and that's That's good. That's serious. That was nice. Thank you. Just briefly, on behalf of uh, law enforcement, we certainly recognize the importance of having partnerships throughout the community. These problems don't stop at city limits or county lines. They grow across the state and across this country. So we're just proud, on behalf of law enforcement, to be a part of this partnership and hopefully find a solution to this problem that plagues our communities. Thanks. Robert, please give the best to the sheriff. And when you know, as we're looking forward to working in Cobb County, uh, we will look forward to working with both of you. Well, you see a number of different forms of interest, and I know each of you here today, right, Jason, have, has an interest. I offered you a little chance if you wanted to say something as well, and you're looking a little, no, okay, we've had enough, enough spontaneous comments. Well, I'll tell you one of the things we're going to do. We want to take everybody interested outside where we're going to actually take a picture in front of the ambulance that's here being donated by AMR. But just in case there are a few questions, I'll stop for a minute for those reporters here. Anyone have any questions? If if you'd like to ask them in here, otherwise we can go outside and do it there. Okay, it looks like everybody's ready to go out to the ambulance.